Most of what you read and hear about low light performance in cameras is lacking nuance at best and is complete tripe at worst. And I'm going to explain why. I'm also going to tell you about a brand new image sensor design that could be poised to change absolutely everything. So hang around until the end to hear about that one. But first, before I go into it all, if you like my content, please do like and subscribe and hit the notification icon. And please do watch to the end because it's one of the only things that YouTube cares about at the moment. It's very much appreciated if you do and really does help me out. Okay, so let's get into it. Low light performance on cameras is a topic that gets a lot of talk and attention. Whenever a new camera is announced, particularly an action camera, one of the first questions that's asked is, how well does it perform in low light? Now, I understand that low light performance can be important, and for some people, it is absolutely essential depending on what they use the camera for. But there's an incredible amount of misinformation out there, particularly when comparing the cameras that are available. In the action camera world, there's an obsession over one inch sensors. They're talked about as if they're some sort of holy grail. And yes, sensor size does play a part when it comes to low light performance but only up until a point. A larger sensor does give you bigger photo sites and it has lower noise, allowing you to up the ISO and still have a usable image. But the reality is that increasing sensor size only gets you so far. When you tire of the low light performance of a one inch chip, what then? A micro four thirds chip in an action camera? that's not gonna work for a whole host of reasons. Now, recently there's been a lot of comparisons between the DJI Osmo 360, the Insta360 X5, and the GoPro Max 2. Inevitably, these comparisons look at low light performance, and it can't be denied the Max 2 is pretty hopeless when it comes to low light. That much is undeniable. But what's really going on here? Most of the comparisons I see put the differences in low light performance down to center size but that's not really what's going on here. As I said, sensor size only plays a part up until a point. At the sensor level, it's not the size of the DJI and Insta360 camera sensors uh, that's benefiting things, but the design of those sensors. Now, you might have heard that because the GoPro sensor is smaller, that the resultant packing of the smaller photo sites together means less low light performance and also a noisier image. At face value, this is true, but it doesn't take into account the tricks that more modern sensors are capable of doing. Let's take the sensor in the DJI Action 5 Pro. It's a one over 1.3 inch chip that DJI says can take up to 40 megapixel still images. Yet DJI says that it has a pixel density of 2.4 micrometers which isn't actually possible. The maximum pixel density that's possible on that size of chip is around 1.3 micrometers. So what's going on? Well, modern sensors like the one used in the Action 5 Pro are capable of processing several photosites and treating them as one. The sensors on the Insta360 and DJI cameras use a quad bear design, which allows them to record a higher resolution, more detailed image in standard video modes, and then switch to a pixel binning mode with combined pixels for their respective low light modes. In other words, the data from more than one photosite is combined electronically and treated as one single larger pixel, often referred to as a super pixel. Hence the reason why DJI can claim a pixel density of 2.4 micrometers. It's a kind of virtual pixel density, and it means for stills images, you can record an ultra high resolution while still benefiting the performance of lower resolution video modes. This method is called pixel binning, which is often treated as a dirty phrase amongst camera enthusiasts because it often gets lumped in with pixel skipping, which is a completely different thing. But the reality is that pixel binning is key to some of the enhanced performance benefits that we see in modern sensor designs, and it's anything but a bad thing. It's actually an essential tool. The result is better apparent low light performance with reduced noise. Unfortunately, the IMX677 sensor used in the current GoPros doesn't have the ability to perform those pixel binning techniques. Okay, so that's one way to increase low light performance that has nothing to do with the sensor size what else can be done to help things? But a lot of the quality of the final image that you see has a lot to do with how the image is actually processed. This is why manufacturers can often use the same imaging chip for years, but eke out 
improvements in performance if they make a better image processor. By improving the image processing pipeline, you can perform much more advanced color and tone processing, as well as far more advanced noise reduction. Cameras like the Ace Pro 2 contain two processing chips, one of them entirely dedicated to image processing. Insta360 calls it an AI chip, and it's built on a five nanometer process. Because the chip is so fast, and because it's being developed to perform noise reduction based upon the very specific noise patterns of the sensor used in that camera, it can produce an incredibly clean, sharp image in very low light levels. Although the sensor design and pixel binning techniques will get you so far, it's the highly advanced image processing that's doing a lot of the grunt work. Not only is there a lot of processor intensive noise reduction going on, but there's also a lot of electronic detail enhancement in the low light modes too, and it's not always pretty, often resulting in a very electronic looking image. That said, in recent updates on newer cameras, the results have been getting better and more natural looking. The Osmo 360 is a very good example of this. When you combine the much more recent sensor and processor design of the Insta360 and DJI cameras, the GoPro cameras with a GP2 chip can't hope to compete in those areas. But make no mistake, as I've just illustrated, pretty much none of the disadvantages of the GoPros beyond a superficial level have much to do with sensor size differences. Now, as I said earlier, I'm not saying sensor size doesn't make any difference at all, just nowhere near as much as you might think it does with such small sensor designs overall. Okay, so we've looked at some of the real reasons why some cameras are better in low light than others. What then for the future? Well, the obvious answer is we need more light going onto the sensor. Here's an interesting fact for you. A modern CMOS sensor only captures around a third of the available light due to the light wavelength filtering that's required to capture the red, green, and blue data. Modern sensors do attempt to mitigate this loss using micro lenses over the photosites, but nevertheless, sensors are losing a hell of a lot of potential low light and noise performance as a result of this fact. And that's where a brand new sensor design comes in. It's been a long time since a completely new image sensor type has been developed that could be potentially used in mass produced cameras. But recent work by ETH Zurich and Emper has resulted in a sensor that could change absolutely everything. The fruit of over a decade of research, the new chip uses lead halide perovskite instead of silicon. Not only is perovskite easier to process in silicon, but its physical properties can be changed based upon its chemical composition. The researchers have pointed out that if the perovskite contains more iodine ions, it absorbs more red light. If you add more bromine, it absorbs green, and if you add chlorine, it absorbs blue light. What this means is that the different wavelengths of light can be filtered without any wasteful light loss. But that's not the only advantage of the new design. Pixels can be layered one behind the other, with each layer remaining transparent to the other light wavelengths. All of this means that a perovskite-based sensor can, in theory at least, capture three times as much light as a silicon-based CMOS sensor for the same surface area, while simultaneously providing three times as much spatial resolution. Such a sensor design also means that demosaicing and moiré can be made a thing of the past. It's more than just a paper theory too. The researchers produced two prototype sensors, proving that the concept works, with the designs proven to be more sensitive to light, with much improved color reproduction accuracy over traditional sensor designs. But don't get too excited yet. Perovskite sensors are still at the very early stages of development, with current prototypes containing pixels of between 0.5 and 1 mm in size. Now that's obviously not practical for your average mirrorless or action camera, so the next step in the research is to reduce the pixel size and to develop new readout electronics, which are currently optimized for silicon rather than perovskite. That said, perovskite sensors have the potential to completely revolutionize how cameras capture light without the need to increase chip size. So. The next time somebody tries to tell you that low light performance comes down to the size of the sensor, you know what to tell them. See you in the next video.